We're here to discuss the real-time audit of Measure 110. And this is a topic that is deeply personal for me. I see a lot of friendly faces and familiar faces on here, but also some new faces. So I'll just briefly um, say what some of you have already heard, which is that you know I grew up, my mom battled meth and heroin addiction for most of my childhood. And um, because of that, uh, in part, was homeless on and off the streets of Portland while I was growing up. And in January of 2009, uh, when I was in my final year of law school, my mom overdosed um, and uh, was left unconscious by her husband at the time because he was afraid of getting in trouble if he called anybody. And fortunately, because of a person coming by to return a spatula that morning, they saw my mom and were able to call emergency services. And she ended up at the ICU at the Portland Adventist Hospital and ended up um, surviving. And uh, my brothers and I moved her to Pendleton from Portland, supported her for about a year while she learned that she loved to read. She hadn't read a book since she graduated, uh, since she dropped out of high school at her sophomore year, but she picked up the Harry Potter book and uh, read that series and then the Twilight series and then the Hunger Games series and then the Game of Thrones series became an absolutely voracious reader. And she ended up uh, being almost six years clean and sober by the time she passed away in October of 2014 after complications from a routine surgery. And so uh, the minister who performed the funeral at my mom's service captured her journey perfectly when she said, Trish, that was my mom's name. She said, Trish reached the place of an ordinary life, just a, jo a job and a house and a dog. But it didn't just happen to her. She fought for it with everything she had in her. And, and I know that you know, there are so many Oregonians or people that maybe would see my mom and would just think, oh, you know, this is a person beyond beyond help. But I know that no matter the fact that she'd been in that rehab a few times, we watched her those last almost six years live her life to the fullest and finally achieve that ordinary life that she had been fighting for. And so I am very, very um, deeply impacted by, and as I know many of us are, the, the drug abuse crisis that we have here in Oregon. And when the voters of Oregon passed Measure 110, we did so because we wanted to change a policy in Oregon to improve the lives of people, to improve our communities. And in the years since, we haven't seen that play out. And I really appreciate uh, the chair for this time, because instead, in many communities in Oregon, we've seen the problem with drug addiction get worse. Um, and obviously, these are everybody who's out there struggling with this, that's somebody's mom or that's somebody's brother, it's definitely somebody's kid, it's somebody's uncle, it's somebody's friend. Um, and I definitely have approached this audit with that humanity in mind. And so that's why the work of our audits division is so important. As elected leaders, we have to work with the Oregon Health Authority and the Measure 110 Oversight and about Ability Count Accountability Council to implement the will of Oregon voters, right? It's not just about decriminalizing, it's about directing people into treatment and improving the lives of Oregon families and Oregon communities. And this real-time audit is gonna provide you with information that you need to act. And I look forward to working with you to help make that happen. Um, and finally, Mr. Chair, I just wanna thank the audits director, Kip Mehmet, and our team for their hard work and professionalism. Our audits team takes very great care and it adheres to strict standards of quality. And they really are an incredible resource to Oregon. And I'm just proud to be on their team to give Oregonians the transparency and accountability that they expect from me as their Secretary of State.